Fresh milled flour is a powerful ingredient, and learning how to wield it when baking can make baked goods taste even better. Steph Senders is here to teach us about the nuances of this exciting ingredient, which is gaining popularity nationwide. Welcome to the show. Oh, thank you, I'm Martha. very glad you could come all the way from New York State. Are you a farmer? I'm not a farmer. I partner with a farmer who grows most of our wheat and rye, spelt, einkorn, corn, all these beautiful grains, but and you, with a mill. But you run a bakery, you grind mm -hmm. your flowers, mm -hmm. you bake your goods and sell them via your shops, as well as farmer's markets? Or? We don't actually have a shop. We oh. run a bread CSA. It's like a bread share. People sign up online and they agree to come to a particular spot where we'll bring their baked bread. We make a pop-up bakery for three hours. Wow. They come get their bread, we fold it up, and away we go, we disappear just wow. like that. And how many of those bread do you make a week? Uh, we make quite a few. During the summertime, 1,500, 2,000 tops for these days, but wow. it seems to keep growing. There's a Thank big you. appetite for great bread. And I have been told that Steph actually has built an amazing oven. That's true, it's a remarkable oven. We built a modified version of some old 19th century Spanish oven. It's made out of brick and metal and stone. Oh, great. And in front of us, some delicious things made with alternative grains. Do you want to describe what's here? We have some rye and some spelt over here. Spelt actually is a form of wheat. Yes, it is. Yeah, it's what we call a wheat precursor or an, an ancient grain. It has a lot of interesting characteristics and some are challenging. It's in some ways easier to farm, but much harder to process. It has hulls that stick right to the kernel and it means you have to put it through another processing step so it's expensive to process. And many people who are uh, gluten intolerant can actually tolerate spelt. That's true, yes. Yeah. And this is rye. Right, we have rye over here, and rye is very, very low in gluten. It holds together by what are called gums, or pentosan gums, they're called, it absorbs a lot of moisture. So if you're using rye in baking, you know right away you're gonna bring a lot of moisture to your, to your baked goods. And now your bakery is making breads that look so delicious. They're very dense, yeah. very beautifully colored. This has an awful lot of seeds in it. That's a German style bread. It's a farmer's bread, which is a, mm. just a country bread. It's made of wheat and then whole rye. Okay. And from a baker's perspective, when we add rye to a bread, one of the things we know will happen, if we add even a little more than say 10% of the flour of rye, we'll see the bubbles in the crumb start to shrink down a little bit. Huh. We know right away that the bread will keep better just by adding 10% rye will wow. improve the keeping quality. What about this bread here? This bread here, so this is 30% rye of the total flour, 30%. And this bread here is a raisin rye, and that's about 20%. It's a little bit lighter because you get more of the wheat gluten, so you get a more open crumb, a little bit softer, less dense, and at the same time you get that beautiful keeping and the depth of flavor that comes from rye. And ice cream cones. Yeah, yeah, we're doing some <laughs> waffle cones. We have uh, ah. uh, rye waffle cones over here and spelt waffle cones over here. Look how here. nice these those are. These are delicious. Pretty big ice cream cones. Hey, start at the top. <laughs> those are nice. And what about the pastas? We make pastas. We have a spelt pasta and a rye pasta. They're not 100% spelt in rye. We've got wheat in there and semolina. So these are your freshly milled flours? Yes, this is a spelt flour. It's very soft. It cracks in a different way than wheat or rye. It cracks open, you get the interior comes out in this silky fine powder, and those flakes don't have the bitterness of a whole wheat bran. Mm. So if you want to add that to something, and even a pizza crust, you add a small amount and you'll get a beautiful speckle on your pizza crust with none of the bitterness. So this is a rye flour. Um, a stone ground rye. I have to feel it too, because yeah. otherwise... Yeah, get a oh, grab yeah, it's on harder. It. Exactly, and you can feel it's a little oh, sandier. And yeah, gritty. Exactly, and if you look at the bran particles, they're darker and they're almost the same size as the starch particles. Yep. How long do they last? Any whole grain flour has oils in there, and if you keep it on your counter in a jar or something, it can become rancid at room temperature. Right. We keep them in a cold, cold area if we're not using them quickly. We go through a lot of flour, yes, sure so it doesn't, do. it doesn't go, uh, doesn't go bad. This is an excellent introduction to the freshly milled grains. Mm -hmm. Uh, that create the best flowers for our breads. And, uh, I think so. Is this your cutter? That's my cutter, too. I have one exactly like it from my Everyone great, needs one. <laughs> no, my great uncle's deli. He had a deli. Yeah, that's fabulous. Oh, this is set right for it. Like Gonna a cut quarter, it really thin. Like a quarter inch slice. Oh, wow, look at this. Uh, what a beautiful yeah. bread. You know, it's worth noticing that a lot of people, if you say, well, this is a rye bread, and they'll say, well, I, I don't like rye. And a lot of that is, 
they associate rye with the flavor of caraway. Right, the and Jewish caraway, rye bread. Right. Exactly, <laughs> and, and to teach people that that caraway seed is, has nothing to do with rye grain. Mm, this is so good. Isn't it good? Thank you very much for visiting You're with us. You're Great pleasure. You're a font of information and experience, and we look forward to tasting all your products. Thank, Thank you. you. Real pleasure to be here. Thanks, Martha. <laughs>